Hey, Adam, how are you? Doing great, Ari. Uh, I'm just curious. Obviously, people prognosticate and have players at different places. Khalil was a guy who some people had in the 20s, maybe late 20s. So can you tell us from your perspective what you saw from him that put him at 15th or I guess even higher on your list? Khalil is a 3 and D center. It is not easy to find seven-footers that can play out on the perimeter offensively and also be able to defend with his ability to shot block and defend the post. For us, that was very appealing. You know, and I know we've gone through this last two weeks. You pick for the best player available, not for the roster. But now that he's on this team and we know his roster, can you give us a thought as you were sitting there starting the shot next to Coach Spo today, how do you see him fitting in with what might be the core of this team? Thank you. Yeah, uh, he's he's going to give us versatility on both ends. And I think his skill set fits us. Uh, the things he does well are going to be things that – uh, Coach Spo is going to be able to use. Um, I think it's a great fit. Um, he's got, um, you know, be able to block shots, defend the rim, uh, shoot threes. He's got a great touch in the post. I think there's a lot of uh, his skill set uh, will be great to play uh, with Bam and and as well as uh, when Bam's off the court. All right, up next, we're going to go Tim Reynolds, AP. Go ahead. I, I know you won't give us the the exact number, but is it fair to say that he was higher than 15th on your board? Yeah, absolutely. He was he was definitely higher than 15. Um I, I won't ask you to speak about any other team, obviously, but to just broadly, as somebody who has studied probably 300 guys over the last 12 months to get ready for tonight. Did anything step? Did anything surprise you tonight? I mean, obviously everyone's talking about the influence, but did anything surprise you when you watched these thirty picks unfold? You know, we 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 ask each other why does this player go here and why does that player go there, and 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 you look at pick by pick, and it makes sense. Every every player for us that we how we see their strengths, weaknesses, the teams that pick those players, it really does make sense to us. And when a player quote unquote drops. They're dropping for that, that player could be the second choice. And and I think looking at the board, especially looking up in front of us, uh, those 14 picks make sense to those teams. And, uh, you know, we weren't sure if Khalil will get to us. Um, so we were looking at different options to potentially move up. But when he was there, uh, you know, we there was a couple picks left and we, we felt there was a good chance for him to get to us. And uh, certainly we were we were excited by that. You know, players that, you know, drop that, you know, it, it all of that is hearsay. You know, it's it's it's, you know, you know, we obviously there's mock drafts and and, and we we read about who we think is going where. And uh, only we only know about this stuff, obviously, for real when when the players names get called tonight. Thank you, sir. Yep. Mark, uh, Mark Berman, Palm Beach Post. Go ahead. Uh, thanks. Yeah, I guess in the mock drafts, he was sort of in the 20s with the big knock on him, uh, his motor, uh, defensive intensity. Where do you see that uh, play into your evaluation? Yeah, Mark, I, I think that's 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 a low hanging fruit description of him. Khalil is not that. I think, you know, I think he went to Oregon, was playing behind an established player, uh, an older player. Uh, he played in every game uh, out there, saw a better situation for himself to go to Indiana. And, uh, you know, I don't think, you know, for him, he showed what he can do. And he played with a motor. He played with intensity. And, you know, I think we're talking about a young player that that has an edge to him and, you know, he doesn't feel like that is a good, you know, that description of him. I think he is uh, shown that he's going to come out and, and put, uh, you know, he's put points on the board. Uh, he can block shots. He rebounds that to me, that doesn't seem like a player that fits that description. Thank you. Recap a video from 
All right, up next, uh, Zachary Weinberger, Clutch Points. Go ahead. Hey, Adam, Zachary Weinberger. Uh, just kind of talking about one of the big things people usually think about when they see a guy that's seven foot. They always talk about how maybe he can jeopardize the pace. But when looking at film of where it just seems like he's, the athleticism is off the charts. Can you just kind of talk about that aspect of his game and how you feel that could fit just perfectly with Miami? Yeah, a lot of good moments of him getting out, getting up at the court, getting out on the perimeter, contesting three-point shots, being a lob threat, moving his feet. I think all those things are there. And so uh, he can't be, you know, he is so excited to be here. He wanted to be here. Um, he was really fired up uh, speaking to him after the draft. Um, I think this is a perfect place for him. And I think we're, we're I think it's a, it's a great match to, to, to be able to, uh, for Khalil to, to maximize his skill set. And next we're going to go Cooper Moorhead, heat.com. Go ahead. Hey, Adam. Um, you described him as a, as a three and D center. And I, I'm hoping you could expand a little bit on how you guys evaluated, you know, his shooting. He, he shot it over 40%, but it was lower volume. Yeah. I imagine you guys think you can develop that into a higher volume shooter. And so what have you seen from, from the shot and, and, and how you project it forward? Yeah, he's he's a willing shooter, and I think you look at his stroke, uh, very fluid, very easy. Uh, there are opportunities where he was he used ball fakes to to get defenders off him, and then pull it and, and take a three. Um, I think you know how he was played there under Coach Woodson in Indiana. Uh, a lot of it was in the post. Uh, you know, a lot of it was lob threat uh, uh, action. So. Um, you know, he didn't have a lot of attempts, 40, but he's a threat. And uh, the idea of being able to put him in position, um, to space the court, uh, I think we feel like his shot um, is good now. Obviously, we're going to work on it with him to get it even better. Um, but just being comfortable shooting threes at this point, definitely a plus. And then just with his athleticism, as far as I could tell, he was mostly playing dropping back, you know, blocking shots, protecting the rim. But because he's such a smooth athlete, do you see him as someone who can play more dynamic kind of pick and roll defensive coverages higher up on the ball? Yeah, absolutely. Going to be able to get up, get out, um, moves his feet. You know, it's 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 a, it's a learning process. You know, that what he did at Indiana is not we're going to expect uh, we're going to uh, show him more here. We're going to teach him uh, different coverages. I think that's uh, the evolution of a young player. Uh, that played in a system in college that, you know, I think we'll be able to um, have his de defensive skill set evolve. Um, I think, I mean, that those are the things that are appealing to us, the ability for him to slide, uh, his lateral movement, but also, you know, that length, uh, ability to contest. Obviously, uh, he had great matchups uh, in the Big Ten this year. Uh, he, he's got a really good base. He knows how to uh, – you know, be big, uh, play, play straight up, um, use that length wisely. Um, and that I think he's scratching the surface. So um, I know he's going to work. I feel good about, we, we feel good about uh, the work we put in to learn about him. Um, uh, we did, we did a lot of background on him. Um, on, you know, Keith, uh, Askins, Eric Amsler, our scouting staff, uh, we've made a lot of, we talked to everybody um, from um, the coach, Coach Crutchfield, uh, Omaha, Nebraska. Now he recruited in Oregon, Oregon staff, uh, the all, everybody at Indiana, uh, people that have worked with him. Um, everybody says he's a, he's a willing worker. He wants to get better. I think uh, defensively, uh, he, he's got that base that he'll be able to do everything that we ask him to do.